Hey guys, Jeff and Alyssa here. I think this is week three of the dating series. Today we want to talk about, is it okay to date a non-Christian? If you're a Christian or um, what does the Bible say about a follower of Jesus, maybe dating uh, someone who's not a follower of Jesus. Now, the, the, the thing I want to start with, which is interesting, is it actually doesn't say anything about that, right? The Bible doesn't talk about dating um, because it wasn't really how they're, it wasn't a social construct of that day and not really how they did things. So with that being said, we have to look at the scripture as a whole, see what's going on there, what, what does God desire and what's his heartbeat for us. And the first thing I think of is, you know, instead of saying, yes, it's right or wrong, my question would say, be, my question would be why, right? Like, why would you want to date someone, which dating leads to marriage, hopefully, right? That's where you're, you're on the road for. And marriage is the closest two human beings can ever get. Why would you want to date someone to go towards the closest human relationship you could ever have when the one thing that's closest to you personally doesn't, they don't also share? And so I think that's really, you know, like the example I'll say is, you know, like if Alyssa doesn't like baseball, that, that's cool with me, right? I, um, you know, it's, that's fine. Um, but if she doesn't, you know, like Jesus, that's a bigger deal because that's actually part of my identity. It's part of who I am. And so I feel like I can never share anything with her. I feel like I can never be honest with anything. Um, we, we know firsthand that in marriage, decisions happen all the time, uh, every day, you know, every five minutes of the day. And so that too, like think about motivation of decision. Like you can't share even what your motivation is because most people who say they're followers of Jesus, you know, their decisions nine times out of 10 are defined by what they think the scripture says and what Jesus is leading them to do. So you can't share that is what I would say. And then a lot of it arises from this idea that, you know, some people think, especially younger people that like Christianity or Jesus is like a slice of their pie. Um, rather than the fact that, you know, if you're a Christian, that's who you are. It's the whole pie, right? It's the whole thing. Um, it's, it's the whole thing. And because, it's not just, oh, you raised your hand and signed a card, but according to scripture, you became this new creation. The world completely kind of restructured itself around the resurrection of Jesus and we're adopted into that family. Like that's a cosmic shaking level thing where something big happened. And so um, that's one thing you have to think of. And then the other thing before I uh, want to hear what you, you say is um, uh, Tim Keller, I think it was someone who said to the extent of, you know, um, when you date someone who's not a, f a follower of Jesus, only one of two things happens. The first one is, um, you know, you put God at the center and then and then they're always on the outskirts. The person you're dating is always in the outskirts and you feel like that's separating because you're trying to get closer to God and, they're, and, they, and they can't understand that. So you drift. Or he says, or you put the person at the center of your relationship and then God's on the outskirts because they don't share that. And when you have decisions on it, it makes you drift apart from God. Um, it's only when you both are followers of Jesus can you really put all of you guys at the middle, including Jesus, and say, hey, we're on a journey. We're on this together. And so that's what I would say. And the last thing I would say, too, is don't get caught up in, even on top of that, whether he says he's a Christian, really look for a disciple of Jesus, right? I mean, when you read the gospels, you see two groups of people. You see that there was crowds gathered to Jesus and then there was disciples gathered to Jesus. And what I like to think about that is you, you have followers and you have fans, right? And I think I heard someone say that, you know, there's a lot of little Christian boys out there, not many men of God who will love and serve and sacrifice and be humble and lift you up and wash your feet metaphorically and physically speaking. And so um, with that being said, you know, is that someone you're looking for? Or are you just settling for someone who maybe says they love Jesus and all these things? And even if they say they're not, like, let me just say this real quick. That don't play the flirt to convert game, right? That's what I like to call it. Like, don't think that you can flirt in hopes that, oh, I'm, it's missionary dating. I'm going to be a missionary to this person. No, you're not, right? Now, can that happen? I have a, I've heard of a few stories where that happens. That's God's providence. That's not, like, you know, something laid out in the scripture. And on top of that, let someone else do that, right? I don't think the dating relationship is the best place to do that because that's confused. Let someone else talk to them about Jesus or don't be dating and then tell them about Jesus. I don't know. So that's what I would say. Uh, what else would you yeah. add to that? Well, I think just to top that off, um, as a girl, just, yeah, observe the guy. Make sure mm -hmm. that he really loves Jesus, that it's not just something um, he has on his Facebook or that he is in your youth group or your Christian school or whatever it may be. Really observe him and what makes him, um, what is evident in his life that shows mm -hmm. that he really is walking with the Lord, loving mm -hmm. the Lord, and able to lead you in a relationship. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that can be really telling. And so observe him, ask his friends, see what they talk about, what they mm -hmm. joke about, all these things, ask mentors in your life. And it's pretty easy to tell usually. You can kind of just tell. Yeah. There's like a, mm -hmm. a, a vibe to someone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Totally. I would say too, as um, speaking to the ladies, if you're asking this question, um, I just want to get to the root of why you would want to date an unbeliever mm -hmm. as a believer. 
or why you are dating someone who doesn't love mm-hmm. the Lord, mm-hmm. and um, and you do. And I think a lot of times as girls, we will get in that situation because we are settling, mm-hmm. because we have been waiting on the Lord, and we are just tired of it, and mm-hmm. it doesn't seem like anything's happening. Um, and so we're gonna take control, and this mm-hmm. is what is at our. This is what's come, and this mm-hmm. is the best. So we're just gonna jump right in. And yes, he's really cute. Yes, he's whatever. Talk to me. Okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. all these things. But if he doesn't love Jesus, you know in your heart that you're mm-hmm. settling. And you're not, the root of it is, is that mm-hmm. you're not fully trusting the Lord and not fully trusting that God is able to bring a man into your mm-hmm. life who really truly loves the Lord and who can lead to you. Um, and I think too, a lot of times maybe you already are in this relationship and you may be afraid to break up because mm-hmm. either you're too involved with this person um, because you physically or you've just been emotionally, dating for emotionally or, yeah. all these things and of course that's really scary to break up with someone mm-hmm. um, or also you are possibly idolizing this person mm-hmm. so they are more important to you than Jesus that's pretty much what you're mm-hmm. saying is that Lord yes I know that you have this plan and I know that that's good but you know I really like this guy so I'm gonna stick to it and mm-hmm. really you're putting him above the Lord loving this person more than Jesus mm-hmm. um, which is a sin and I think as um, as I think back and I read scripture, I love Lamentations 3.25 and it says, The Lord is good to those who wait for Him, mm-hmm. to the soul who seeks Him. And what a sweet promise that the Lord is good to those who wait for Him mm-hmm. and the Lord is completely able to bring a man into your life who is all these things. Yeah. Um, and maybe it does take longer than mm-hmm. you, most likely it will take longer than what you would like, mm-hmm. but um, God is so good to those that wait and it's so worth it to wait on the Lord. Yeah, I really, yeah, I really like that. I, I, I I mean, I think uh, we would end on that exactly what that verse says that, um, we don't have to believe the lie that is always whispered into our head that God is a buzzkill or God wants to, you know, destroy or bring us, you know, no joy. Mm -hmm. It's actually the opposite. He is good. He wants to bring us joy. He wants to bring us life and his ways are trustworthy because he is good. And so live in that. Um, and we, and we hope that you guys will believe in that because God is good. So we love you guys. Uh, we'll see you next week. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed that video. A few quick announcements. First one is Alyssa's book comes out super soon, April 15th, Mm -hmm. so about a month and a half, tax day actually. Um, Spoken for, (laughs) ladies, you guys will love this book, so check it out. You can pre-order it by clicking down here. Second one is we're still doing Subbable. Um, If you want to help support the channel, we're giving signed books and uh, t-shirts and uh, thank you videos and stuff like that. If you want to check that out, that's down here. And lastly, we hope you subscribe so you can keep getting these videos weekly up here. That's all we got. Love you guys. Mm